You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and I have a familiar face to BCA viewers. I have Soraya Presume Calixt. Say it okay? Yeah. And she, she does our show, The Zone. Yes. On cable for mm -hmm. a, a while. Yes. A long time. Yes, yes. But we have something new to talk about. Yes. She wrote a book. Yay. Okay, which is very cool, I think. I've always wanted to write a book. I've just never sat down to do it. Um, and this, maybe it's because of what your book's about. I don't know. The book is called The Power of Fear. Mm -hmm. And we're promoting the fact that Soraya is going to be at our wonderful Brockton Public Library, mm -hmm. which, full disclosure, I'm chairman of the board of the library. Oh, nice. I started there as a library page when I was 15. It was my first job that I ever had. Oh. And I loved the library. Mm. And Mayor Units appointed me to the board in 1996. And oh, I've been on it ever since. I'm the chairman. I've been the chairman, I've been the vice chairman. I love the library. I love, I have 2,000 books at home. Oh, nice. I love the library. Most of my time, we couldn't really, you know, pay to get books. Yeah. Therefore, my time was, I was usually hidden somewhere in the library, and they were looking for me. I was like reading, 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 and reading never stopped. So I always enjoy reading because I believe there is so much that you can learn from other people's experience and as well the thing that you could go through and then you can get um, some amazing ideas. Well, you know our mantra at the library is the people's university. Mm. The library is where everybody goes, every culture, every race, every religion, everybody's the same. Mm -hmm. You go to your public library, we've beefed up our collection so it's in other languages too, yes. other than English. <clears throat> um, and people say libraries aren't necessarily relevant anymore. They're more relevant than ever, especially in Brockton where people can't afford sometimes to have books. And unfortunately, we don't have any bookstores in Brockton anymore. We used to, when I was a kid, we had two or three of them. We don't have any. I don't think your civilization, if you don't have a library, you don't mm. have a bookstore. But the bookstore nearest to us is in Braintree at Barnes & Noble. I like yes. the old bookstores, the used bookstores, because you can find all sorts of treasures in. But we get a brand new book right here, okay? Yes. And The Power of Fear, the, the subtitle here is How to Defeat Its Authority Over Your Life Through Faith. Yes. Let's talk about that first. Of course. Faith. Faith. And I felt there is no one word to define faith. Faith is something that regardless of what's going on in your life, you have that special hope that you cannot really express and tell people this is what it is, but that survival, that resiliency, and I think some people will call it, that some way or another, you know for sure that moment that you're going through, you are going through it, it's not permanent. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, you're gonna have something, something gonna happen. And I've seen the weather lately, you know, it's supposed to be summer. But you know what? It's raining, it's raining, it's cold. It's so, hot, it's cold. Yes. It's really hot, it's really cold, it's crazy. <laughs> so nature, I was thinking about that, nature never complains. However, we complain about so many things in our lives. And now if we can hold on to that faith, and that faith that is um, embodied with, to me with the Word, to me it's through the Word. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God and the Word was God. To me, that's what keeps me going. That's my faith. I came here in the U.S. Um, not too long ago, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, for a few years now. I didn't know how to speak the language. But I had that desire in my heart that I want to go to school. I had that desire that I would love, would love to speak the language. Yes, I do speak Haitian Creole. I speak French, and I do speak Spanish. You went ahead of me but because I'm, I wish I spoke another language. My brother speaks fluent Haitian Creole in Florida. He's been there for 40 years. He's nice. actually raising five Haitian young men and women. Wow. That he you see adopted. the circle of life? Oh, yeah. Isn't and, he amazing? Hey, I was lucky when I first got involved with the Haitian community in Brockton and Fred mm. Fontaine was president of Shoop. Yes. I learned about the squash soup <laughs> in the new year. That's my favorite thing, and I love the Haitian Do food. you still eat it? Oh, of course I do. Any chance I get. <laughs> um, Marlene did something over at the Adult Day Health Center, and mm -hmm. they had it, and um, I was like four bowls of soup. Oh, nice. She has a restaurant now, so I can go That's there. That's awesome. You can go in um, I love Cape Verdean food, Haitian. Just give me food. It doesn't matter. Just food. What it, it doesn't food. matter where it's coming from. Language, music, culture, food, family. It's all the same. And faith ties it all together. And it does. You're talking about fear too, which is something that, you know, uh, lives with all of us. If you think about it. Of course. You know. I was just putting on Facebook last night. Mm -hmm. I did not sleep. I don't sleep well. Ooh, okay. there's something for you, Mark. Okay, so. 
Um, I'm up on Facebook at 3 in the morning. I got 27 different suggestions that people posted to me. Melatonin, don't have your screen on two hours before, you know, 20 minutes before you go to bed. Um, you know, people have doubt. There's a, there's a chapter in here about paranoia and doubt. And yes. doubt just because you know, not have to get you doesn't mean, you know, you know that old saying. Um, how f fear is triggered. Now, I haven't read the book yet, but mm -hmm. I will now. Thank you. Okay. And we're excited, by the way, at the library about local authors. Okay. The fact that we have a local author from Brockton coming to our library, mm -hmm. what could be better than that? I appreciate that, Mark. Um, when I came to the U.S., my first job was in Brockton. I didn't go to school yet. It was in Brockton. Mm -hmm. So for me to be able to have that first experience, my first book at Brock the Brockton Library, it's just a, a, a dream come true. Because oh. you dream things, you're hoping for things, and when you can see it, but most likely how it's going to make an impact, a difference in other people's life. We're not going to give it all away here because we they can't. have to come and listen to you. <laughs> and the PhD, did you get that here? Yes. Where'd you go? So I went to theological school, Newburgh Theological, because I got my master's from Boston University. Yeah. And then I went to Newburgh to get, because I did all the coursework, and I thought I wanted education. And five years along the road, I realized that, no, what I want is to talk to people and for them to understand the true nature of, you know, as you couldn't sleep, sometimes our pain is so strong that until we deal with the pain, it will be difficult to actually get to the point of what it is that we are going through. So counseling has been uh, healing for me because I went to school to heal myself. Mm -hmm. Then I can make a difference in other people's life. You've taught too, I'm teacher? Sorry? You've taught too, teacher? Um, no, I am an adjustment counselor. I do, but, I do counseling. But, but teaching, you, you do it on a daily basis. Adjustment counselor is a teacher in a lot of ways, oh, yes. too. For oh, yes. For sure. And, and especially nowadays, before I'm older. So when I went to school, they didn't have adjustment counselors. They had a guidance counselor. Mm -hmm. And I love my guidance counselors. They were big, big helps to me. Mm -hmm. they were, I came from a family of teachers. Both my grandmothers were teachers. My mother was a teacher. My dad taught at Stonehill and Massasoit. I teach oh, at Massasoit nice. part-time. Yes. I do public speaking. Mm -hmm. But um, the counselors, I, I remember their names. They really helped Aww. me out in high school. I had, Thank you. We, I was lucky at Brockton High. I had one guidance counselor for four years because I was in the Azure building, and mm -hmm. I remember her formally. We had one for two years at West Middle School. It wasn't the middle school then. It was the junior high school. <laughs> Keep but, but um you know, everybody has doubts, everybody has fears, all... everybody has things that have shaped their lives or traumas or whatever they've mm -hmm. gone through. It could be the death. I mean, I've, that's what I've been dealing with. My dad passed last September 11th. Mm. A wow. lot of a big really date in dear the good States. friends. I had a treasurer here of the board. She was 84 years old. She had stage four pancreatic cancer. I missed her. I had a very good friend who was a teacher. Mm -hmm. She died at 76 years old. Wow. The other one was 84. Telling me I have a minute. I knew you and I wouldn't, you, we would go through this quick. Of so course. give us your contact information. Sure. If you have a website, mm -hmm. more information to find out about the book. Of course. Um, they can go to Amazon and get it. They can go to spacesupport.org, which is my nonprofit organization. My phone number 857 891 4328. Mark, I am really honored and I'm so thankful that I'm able to talk to you and put the word out. Same here. Thank you. Congratulations on the book. I appreciate it. I'm Thank you so waiting much. Waiting for the date, and we'll probably be there with a the camera. Yes, yeah, September, okay? September 8th. Thank you. To the four. Thank you. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.